What up guys, this is Alexis, Sophie Leather. All right, finally got around to it. I'm gonna show you guys how to make this briefcase, my executive briefcase. It's not gonna be specifically this one, but very similar. So, I wanna first of all say thank you very much for your continued support. Those FD templates are doing really, really well. But we are, we are going to make a build along video on this briefcase. Uh, a couple things about that is, it's not gonna be one video because it's gonna be way too much. It's gonna be an undetermined amount of uh, videos. I don't know if it's gonna take me four or five videos to do it, but I wanna keep them anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. So with that being said, in the description box, there's gonna be timestamps, all right? So you guys don't have to sit through everything. If there's a particular part uh, that you're looking for, it's gonna be in the, in the timestamps in the description. It's all, it should also populate uh, on the timeline on the actual video itself, it's pretty neat. It takes me a long time to actually do that. Um, so feel free to use that resource, it's amazing. That being said, I keep saying that being said, but I'm gonna keep saying that. With that being said of me saying that being said, Download your templates, all right? They're gonna be down below in the description box. Download the templates, you need that. Um, I do recognize that you're gonna need to download the template without a fully functional uh, build series. So you're just gonna have a little bit of faith. You're gonna need a little bit of faith that I'm gonna actually follow through and make the full series, which I will, okay? So download those templates. You're gonna need that to follow along. And I don't know exactly how far I'm gonna get in this to, uh, for today, uh, but I will put up at least one video every week or so, week or two, uh, and try to finish this bag. Uh, as far as the time is gonna take to do this, you can assume safely, depending on how crazy and elaborate you wanna get, um, it'll take you anywhere from 20, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not 20, anywhere from 10 to 15 hours for a simple build. Uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 hours, 20 to 35 hours for a really complicated build. For some reference, this took me about 30 hours to make this. Um, but the one I'm gonna show you today is very, very similar to that. Uh, it just requires less leather, um, a little more streamlined. You'll see when I explain it, but I would say anywhere between 10 to 15 hours uh, to build what we're gonna do today. It's actually very similar to this build right here follow that link, very similar to that. That's what essentially we're gonna do today with the addition of the, um, the hanging pocket. We'll go over that here in a second, the next section of this video. Um, so yeah, without further ado, my goal today for this part one is to go over every single uh, template pattern. I'm sorry, every single pattern, A, B, C, D, all of them. I, it goes from A to R. We're gonna go over every single piece overview of the bag and what, where is that piece on this bag. We're, we're gonna do that. We're also gonna go over all the hardware, where to find it. Um, I'll put links in the description for that, as well as the leather, the thickness of leather, and some vendors that I get my leather from. Um, and two different ways of building this bag. The really expensive long way, uh, but comes out really super nice. Or the quick economic version, which is, is half the leather, and half the time, but still looks almost identical to that. And I'll explain all that when we get over to that part of the video, which is coming very soon. Um, let's see what else, hold on. What did I go over? Oh, that's what it was. I'm gonna assume you guys have basic leather crafting skills. If not, check out my leather crafting tips playlist. But this is an advanced skill. So because of that, I'm gonna make this build series a little more comprehensive and dive a little deeper into exactly the technique I'm using, how I do certain things and certain techniques um, a little bit more, because um, this is the magnum opus of my shop, and I wanna make sure that you guys are completely, fully educated on the way I do things, okay? Of course, everybody does things different, and that's fine, but hopefully you can learn something uh, from me, but I'm gonna go into, like I said, I'm gonna dive a little deeper into exactly um, how I'm gonna do this. Another thing, keep in mind, once you guys learn how to build something like this, all right, a bag like this, keep in mind, 
you can scale this up, okay? Make it your own. You can scale this up. You can scale it down, make a purse out of it, uh, scale it up, make a bigger briefcase. You can add two gussets in there if you wanted to um, because what I'm gonna teach you in this build series is the basic fundamentals on making a bag, okay? The way I do it, of course, there's probably easier and better ways. I'm just showing you how I do it, okay? And the biggest, the biggest technique is a gusset. Once you learn that, you can turn any 2D project into a 3D project, all right? You're gonna add that depth, and I'm gonna show you my foolproof, full, full, full proof. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my fail proof. I don't even know how to talk. I'm gonna show you what I do to make that gusset perfect every time. And that is the secret to gussets. But it's time consuming, but whatever. All right, let's go over the bag itself. Okay, guys, I need you to get your prints out, all right? We're going to go over this bag right now, okay? First, let's start with piece alpha, okay? Alpha is the front body. So pattern A is the front body. Let me show you what that's. That is this piece right here. This main body. This main body. This is A. Okay. This is A. This print does not include the zipper. I'll explain later why because you can always add these little extra features. So it doesn't include this pouch. But piece A is this right here. This main front body. Okay. That's A. Piece B is the back body. All right, pretty self-explanatory. That is going to be this back body right here, this piece right here, this big back body piece. All right, not this flap, just this big piece. All right, that's piece B. Charlie is the flap, the storm flap. Piece C is this piece, okay? This piece right here, the flap, all right? Which comes all the way to right there. All righty? That's piece C like in Charlie. And you'll notice that I have it flipped and zoomed as well. Piece D is the gusset. That's self-explanatory, right? D is the gusset, this whole bottom piece. And you notice it's one piece. A lot of guys like to put two pieces together, but I make mine one solid piece. All right, that's the gusset. All right, I, I guess I should mention as well that my blueprints are not, let me talk to you down here. My blueprints are not to scale. The way I make my blueprints, they're just schematics because um, I typically work with rectangles, okay? So everything I do, everything I use is a, is a rectangle and then I cut the radius however I want. So that's how I, typically build stuff. This is the way I do it. I'm very linear like that. It needs to be a square or a rectangle, and then I cut the edges off to whatever roundness I like. So you'll see in the blueprints that um, it's uh, not to scale. That's because I'm just telling you, you need to cut this 12 by 16. I'm pretty sure you guys are smart enough to realize, oh, uh, I can cut it 12, to 16, 12 by 16, no big deal. And we're actually gonna go over cutting everything out and the way I do it. So just bear with me on that one. All right. Piece D is the gusset, and like I was saying, we're gonna go over into detail exactly how to get this gusset, but for now, you can go ahead and cut out, not right now, don't cut it out now, but we're gonna cut out at a minimum. You notice it says, at a minimum, you'll need that, those dimensions. It's, never gonna, it's not gonna be bigger than that. In fact, it's gonna be a little bit shorter than that, but I'll show you when we get there, okay? But that's what you need, okay? Piece E, like an echo, is a newspaper pocket. Now the newspaper pocket is back here, all right? When we get there, I'm gonna show you that you have two options. This newspaper pocket actually goes all the way out to the edge. If you watch the other video, I make it short, and on the inside, I have the laptop sleeve that goes all the way out to, whoa, a little zoom job there. The newspaper, the laptop sleeve on the inside goes all the way out. So you have two options. Uh, when we get to that, I'll explain that. But this is the newspaper pocket back here, all right? This print's not going to reflect it going all the way out. It's going to come out short. And you're going to have to stitch that in. It'll make sense when we get there. 
F is the laptop sleeve. That is on the inside. I guess I should take all this out. Excuse me. Bear with me while I take all this out. I guess I should have I should have done this before hand. But let's go ahead and uh, move this out of the way. I actually have a laptop in there. So I don't know if you can see it, but that's the laptop sleeve in there, okay? That is F. The laptop sleeve. F. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. G is the handle. G is going to be, let me get closer because now we're getting to the smaller pieces. Let me move the camera real quick. All right, like I said, G is gonna be the actual handle itself. G is gonna be the actual handle itself. That's G. Oh, I'm trying to get this. So G is this, all right, just so you guys know. H, like in ha ha ha, is the handle connectors. That's this piece, all right? You're gonna need two of those, make two of these. Handle connectors. I'm actually doing this to also make sure that my, my blueprints are correct. That is H, okay? And like I said, there's going to be uh, timestamps in the bottom of the page. So skip all this shenanigans. I, like in indigo, is the D-ring connectors. Make four of these, it says make four. D-ring connectors, that's this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, and this guy. That's the D-ring connectors, and they go all the way through. So it's a very unique way I make my bags, by the way. This is the mail bag setup, the way it lifts up on the spine. Anyway, that's I. Now J, like in ja ja, -ja is the female buckle, all right? We're gonna go over all the hardware here in a little bit, but uh, J, female buckle, that's gonna be this piece of leather, right? This piece of leather that loops around, that is J. That's J, okay? K is the male buckle leather piece. That's gonna be this piece right here. That is going to be K, like in ka 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 ka. All right, that's K. L is the support straps. L, like in la la la, right here. That's the support straps, these straps. There's two of those, let's make two. That's these support straps, okay. M, now we're getting into the shoulder strap. Let me uh, change the camera real quick, all right. All right, so M, like in mommy, is the shoulder strap, the main body, okay? So if we take this off, this is really stiff. That's the main strap, okay? The main strap. That's M. M, zoom to the left. M, zoom to the right, so you get a closer view. And like in Nancy, is the buckle end of the strap, all right? That's the buckle end of the strap, okay? O, like in orange, is a trigger snap connectors. The trigger snap connectors are for the shoulder snaps. You need to make two of those. That's this little piece right here that connects the trigger snap. That's one for that end and one for this end, okay? P, like in penguin, are the uh, strap keepers. I make mine a little bit unique. I use that Sam Brown stud there, but that is, that's P right there, it has two of them. All right, that's P. Those little connectors like that. Uh, the uh, strap keeps. All right, let's get to uh, gusset ring connectors, make two of these. Uh, hold on, let me find one. This is, this is simply the gusset ring connectors, Q. That's gonna be for key ring, all right, hold on. Actually, no, it's not. I made a mistake. I lied to you just now. Let me show you. All right, so Q is gonna be for that. Gusset ring connector. See, I like to label it where it's self-explanatory. 
That is the gusset ring connector, that little leather piece right there, gusset ring connector. That's Q. R is the base inset. Let me change the camera angle again, stand by. Last but not least, we're looking, last but not least, we're looking at R, like in Ralph. R is the base inset, okay? So if you look in there, I have this loose piece, okay? Look how much it patinaed, by the way. <laughs> Just like in two or three weeks. This is a base inset. All right, I call this a base inset. Um, hold on, I gotta get back a little bit. What's the deal with the auto zoom? Now what this is gonna do, right now you notice that it's easily collapsed on itself. I don't like that. So you make this solid piece and you throw it in there loose like that and it prevents that, it maintains its, it maintains its, its structure, all right? And it protects the bottom of your bag if you're throwing stuff in there. So that's the base inset. All right, let me change the camera and go again. We can uh, talk more. All righty. One thing that I wanted, am I, is my head cut off? It's cut off. That's better. Oh, this is a bad shot. Oh, I know what I could do. I'm gonna sit down. Am I over there? All right. Yeah, okay, you can see me, right? All right, I wanna talk about the thickness, right? The thickness of the bag. Every piece on the template, A through R, every piece is going to be, with the exception of three, four items, with the exception of four or five items, sorry, and I'll explain that in a second. It's all gonna be nine ounce. Absolutely everything's gonna be nine ounce. Um, all nine ounce, you can get away with 10, that's gonna be heavy. Eight might be a little too thin, it's your call. But I found that nine ounce is going to be absolutely um, perfect. It is a little stout. This bag finished is, f is gonna be, it's close to five pounds, this particular bag, but that's because I doubled up. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but the bag that we're gonna make on this build video is gonna be closer to four pounds. Although the thickness is gonna be the same. I'll explain that later. So everything is nine ounces, with the exception, okay? We're gonna go through piece A. We're gonna go through it and tell you what's all nine ounce. A is nine ounces, that's the front body. B is five ounces, that's the back body. C, like in Charlie, the flap, nine ounce. D, like in Delta, that's the gusset, that's gonna be five ounces. Five ounce for the gusset. The newspaper bucket, E like an echo, that's gonna be five ounces. F like in Frank, that's the laptop sleeve inside, that's five ounces. G like in googly, that's the handle. That's just this piece alone. That's five ounces, that's five ounces. G, five ounces. H like in Hector, that's the handle connectors. That's this piece right here. Like I told you, that's, that's nine ounces, nine ounces. I, D-ring connectors. That is nine ounces. G, I'm sorry, J, the female buckle. All right, the female buckle, nine ounces, nine. K, the male buckle, that's nine ounces. L, like in Larry. These support straps, nine ounces. M, the shoulder strap, <clears throat> nine ounces. Nine ounces, okay. N, like in Nancy, the shoulder strap buckle N, nine ounces. O, like in ostrich, trigger snap connectors on the buckle. I'm sorry, on the strap, that's nine ounces. P, like in piranhas, shoulder strap keepers, the strap keepers, all right? That's nine ounces. Q, like in the gusset D rings, the gusset D rings, that little D ring there, that's five ounces, five. R, like in Ralph, the base inset is nine ounces, all right? 
nine ounces. So the reason why I make my bags like this is that all I have to do is buy one side or two sides, a five ounce and a nine ounce. Now this piece right here, I didn't go over that. I'll add it to the templates. It might be QR, it might be piece, it might be template S. I just realized while I was making this video that I do not have that in the template, but by the time you download it, it'll be in there. Q, what's the last piece? R. So piece S, like in Sam, let me write that down. S is gonna be this little piece back here. And then what that does is uh, gives you an option to put a key ring there or whatever. So let me change the camera angle. All right, that was so super long-winded. So super long-winded. So I apologize for the long-windedness. You tell me, man, Alexis, that's a lot of leather. Um, I have to buy a whole nine ounce and then a whole five ounce. Yes, but that will yield probably at least two bags, maybe three. In other words, if you were to buy if you were to buy two sides of nine ounce and two sides of five ounce, you'll actually yield five bags. So you can do that. Um, you, might get, you might get maybe two and a half for a nine ounce piece and a five ounce piece. And that's what we're gonna do. We're, we're going to have, I have a nine ounce piece and I have a five ounce piece, brand new side. So we're, we'll find out together um, how much I can yield. I know for sure two, maybe two and a half. So that's that. Um, but what you can do, what you can do is buy just one side of five ounce, okay? And this is what I did with this bag. You can buy one side of five ounce, all right? And any piece that is nine ounce, it requires a nine ounce piece, you're just going to have to double it up and marry it together, all right? So you're gonna have a finished side. You notice how this side is, you have your, um, your grain, and then also you have your grain over here. This is a pretty cool way of, of making a two-tone. So if you wanted a two-tone, if you wanted this uh, tan and, or black and on the inside a nice finished piece or a nice finished lining, then you would do that. You would get a five ounce black and a five ounce tan and then you could put, you can make it how you want. Same thing with uh, the gusset, I'm sorry, the uh, strap here. You can make the inside whatever color you want. So on this particular bag, this is why it took so long is because I made this all out of five ounce, all out of five ounce. And anything that required nine ounce, which is most of the bag, I just doubled up on it, all right? But for the sake of this build, we're gonna keep it a nine ounce and we're gonna keep it uh, a five ounce, two separate size sizes. Um, because if you make it, if you put two five ounces together, Anything you put together, you're gonna have to stitch. And that's what actually took the longest, was stitching that little guy there, stitching all four of these pieces, and actually stitching this whole flap. Um, not to mention that took double the leather. If you think about it, if you think about it, all I have to do is just use a nine ounce piece for everything that's nine ounce. That's, that's one size of leather versus buying two five ounces put together, that's a lot more expensive. I would say 250 bucks in raw material to make this. I needed two sides of leather. Actually, I did it on one side of leather, but it was, I needed to tap into another one just a little bit. So one big size of leather could actually make one bag, one five ounce could, could yield this bag if it's really, really close. Um, and also you would need to do two five ounces to make the strap. It's just a lot of work if you have to, I just happen to have nine ounce laying around of Herman Oak. But we're gonna make it with a true nine ounce, everything that requires a nine ounce, and a five ounce, everything that requires a five ounce. So don't know if that was a lot of information there, but hopefully you guys can skip along on the bottom there. The next thing we're gonna do, first I have to make that one uh, pattern S because I don't have it. Before I forget, I gotta do that. Um, but when I come back, uh, we're going to make, we're going to cut everything out, all right? And what, what I'm going to do is not just fast forward and show you how, um, just fast forward through the process. I'm going to show you how I do it. And um, yeah, I think that'll help. Once we cut everything out, then we'll go over all the hardware that's needed because I forgot to do that before I told you I was going to cut everything out. So we'll go over the hardware needed 
uh, after we cut everything out. That's what I'll do today. We'll cut everything out and I'll go over the hardware that's needed and that's that. <sighs> okay, let me go grab some lunch, make that other pattern before I forget. When I come back, we're gonna cut everything out and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Bye. Alrighty. All right, so. Let's go ahead and grab this leather. So you can see, this is a Wicked and Craig nine ounce, and I haven't even touched this yet. So we have two sides here. I'm gonna go ahead and take one. Uh, if you guys don't mind watching that video up here somewhere um, on where I get my leather, um, basically Wicked and Craig and ask for Cindy. She's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, this is their Latigo medium brown, but as far as the leather goes, uh, I would stick with whole grain leather. And uh, that bag that, that tan bag is actually Wicked and Craig, their tooling leather. That is just their tooling leather. Um, I wanted to see how that patinas and breaks in over after a while. So we're gonna go ahead and cut up all of the nine ounce. <clears throat> this is a complete side. And the way I order my stuff from Wicked and Craig is, uh, so you can see that, uh, I'm trying to see, yeah, this is the back and then this is the belly. I always wanna work on the strong side, the back right here. That's what I always wanna do. Um, the belly you can use for other stuff, but I want something to be really strong. So I'm gonna cut all my panels out of something like this right here. So one of the first thing I'm gonna do is get a rough measurement and see how much I need. And that's real simple. If you look at pattern A, B, uh, you know, the front body, the back body, and the flap. I don't know what, what, what that is, A, B, and C, I think. Whoa, you can't look at that, cheater. A, B, and C, yeah. So A, B, and C, that's the front body, back body, and flap. I want you guys to realize um, when, I, when I build my, when I engineer, I guess you could say, my products, I always try to make it as efficient as possible. If you notice, they are all the same dimensions, okay? The front body, back body, and the storm flap is the same. They are the same dimensions. I did that on purpose for this process so that we can cut it stream, uh, seamlessly. So if you're cutting everything at once, they tend to line up a lot cleaner than cutting each piece out individually. In other words, um, I'm gonna cut out all three dimensions and then, and then cut them out. So I'll cut them, wow, that didn't make any sense at all. I'll cut the long way all the way through, the total size, and then I'll individually divide them. To me, that, that makes a cleaner, um, a cleaner product. So I'm basically gonna go ahead and just see how many I can get out because I know our dimensions are, yeah, so as it stands now, if we put it this way, then we can yield two sections, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and just, times 12, oh, it's 16 times three. So you need 48 inches to, 48 inches total for the, the width, right? So look at that. If I go all the way out to here, actually, I might use that for the strap. Yeah, I might cut it off right here, 48. Look at that. So I essentially have I want to show you guys. 
this right here is gonna be enough for my main body. My, my front body, back body, and also my uh, flap. This is gonna be it right here, this chunk. And you can see that one, two, three, I can still get another one, two, three. So there's enough here for two briefcases. And don't forget, you still have this section here, this butt section, which is really strong. And you have this next section here that you can probably squeeze out another. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. You're cutting it close there. But uh, this butt section right here, this is a really strong piece. I'm going to use this for, I'm going to use this piece here for all the, the connectors and all the stuff that's going to really... Uh, bear a lot of the weight and the stress. So I'm going to use this butt section here for that uh, Those pieces those pieces need to be tough. You don't want to use anything That's spongy like this. You see that you don't want to use anything that's spongy um, For those pieces because they're gonna really take on a lot of the stress So you want to get something strong. That's what I use the butt for so I'm gonna turn the camera answer my phone and uh, We'll start cutting it up. All right, I'm gonna rotate this around and I'm gonna cut off this neck. Okay. So just to confirm, we have enough right here. We're gonna use the butt for the intricate hard pieces. We're gonna basically cut out our pieces here, um, but we need a straight edge, okay? And uh, this will be, Enough here, yep, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this neck because I don't need it. I just wanna make sure that I have enough here, 48. 48. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just double checking. 48. Yep. Right, okay, perfect. We need at least 48 long. So I'm gonna cut this off because we're gonna start cutting right here, basically. So I'm gonna cut this off right at the, the tip here. Got my scale, right? Let me see if I can bring this over here so you can see it. Right here. This is where I'm gonna cut this straight off. You guys can look at my leather crafting tips on the tools I use, but I basically I'm going to build this whole I'm going to build this whole briefcase, cutting it out with an Exacto knife. So you don't have to get crazy and buy a $300 trim knife. Exacto knife with a replaceable 17 cent blade will do the trick. So one thing that you want to start doing too. Is have some weights okay so I have I have some this is from when I was a machinist um, but I have some weights and some scrap leather so I don't tear up the leather to hold down the scale when you're cutting if not it's gonna want to move on you and I'll show you that here in a second this video is taking forever Oh, I don't, actually don't need that because it's going to go right on the scale. What I do is I put this weight on the scale so it doesn't move, right? And I'm going to cut. Can you see that? I'm going to change the camera. So basically, I'm putting this scale here because if you're cutting, as you're cutting and you come down here, this is going to want to do this. It's going to want to push. So I know that I have enough material over here going this way. We already measured that out basically 48 inches because we need three pieces at 48 inches. We need three pieces at 16 inches, right? If you look at your, I'm trying to avoid using uh, numbers because I want you to buy the pattern. Um, but anyway, we're cutting it along the width, basically. So 16 inches is the width of, the, of all three sections, which 16, 
16 times 3 is 48. So we need at least 48 inches. So here we go. I'm going to put this down here, and this is how I cut. I hold here, take this, I hit it hard. When I get to right here, I keep my hands on there and I slide. So there's never contact loss. There's never any pressure loss on the scale. Find the groove again. Just ride that fence. Don't cut your thumb off. Now this blade is brand new. This is nine ounce leather. And I'm gonna show you that what an exacto knife could do. I mean, come on now. 17 cents is what this blade cost. Done. So this is just extra that I'll use for FD leather. I'll put this away, we're not gonna use this. But the first thing you wanna do is get you a straight edge. So that's what we're doing. Now, now we can work on dicing this up a little bit more. Let me change the camera. Now remember that this is our main body here. We wanna get a straight edge to work off of the straight edge. Um, now keep in mind, you need the straps for your shoulder strap. This is the back, this is the belly. Let's work on everything towards the back. The strap, you want it to be right along this spine here because you want it to be super tough. I just wanna make sure that this is enough, which I think it is. Let me just double check. I should have done this before. I just wanna make sure we have enough for Three feet, yeah, oh yeah, plenty. Yeah, so we have plenty here. So here's a neat little trick on getting a, a straight edge. Once we get a straight edge, then we can work down. So the way I cut my straight edges, obviously you see this is kind of wiggly. That's a legit leather term called wiggly. You get your scale, right? Now I don't know if you can see this, but the width of the scale is about two inches. So that I know that if I come so about right here, I leave a little bit of, a little bit, I'll try to get as close as I can. No matter what I cut off, there's gonna be enough. There, there's gonna be enough to make our strap on the, on the bad piece. So I get it here, get some of these wood clamps and you're just gonna clamp really hard right here. This is how I get my straight edge. This is super crucial though. So we're clamped. This ain't moving. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut right here. Straight edge McGee over here. Cutting a straight edge. Take this joker off. I might need to pass through it again. Oh, just a little bit got caught up right here. Now this is what I wanted to show you. This is a piece that's coming off. But from this piece, I can get my strap, all right? Now, What's left is a straight edge, and we're gonna work off of that. All right, now there's a straight edge. I just wanna see if I have enough for both pieces for the strap. Next, we're gonna take this piece and cut our strap. All right, we're just cutting out strap N and M. M like in man and N like in Nancy. We don't have to get the exact um, measurements or anything like that. We're just literally cutting a strap long enough till we can work on it later. But I'm using a strap cutter, okay? This is a $25 tool, absolutely amazing. You need a straight edge. You need a straight edge to use this tool, okay? Um, so when you cut it like this, you, you, it yields two straight edges, one off of here and one that you cut off, all right? That's why I made that cutoff thick because I can still use this for straps. So we're gonna go ahead and get, um, mark our, I don't know if you can see that. 
this is how you get it to the dimensions that you want. All right. There's not tutorial on strap cutters, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You can look it up. I'm getting the dimensions that I want, and I'm just going to cut this strap out. Strap cutter set, and this, you want to ride the straight edge on this flat part here. All right, so you, you unscrew this, set it where you want, tighten it again, and uh, yeah. What we're going to do here is run it through there, start the process. And what I like to do, I start the process like that. I like to clamp this right here. It's like an extra hand, all right? Just clamp the end there, and you'll see how easy it is. Let me show you. All right, so that's clamped off. I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure that the, that the, the straight edge is riding uh, this, uh, make sure the straight edge is riding the tool. This is not going to go to waste. We'll use this for something else. But look, now you have an inch and a quarter strap that we could use for the uh, shoulder strap. And anything you cut off with that, anything you cut off with the uh, strap cutter is going to yield another straight edge. So you can use this as well to cut off your other pieces. I think there is, this is wide enough to make a three quarter inch piece. I think you need like two of those pieces. So don't throw this away. Everything's off, works off a straight edge. That's how I operate. Now I know, now I know that this is not going to be long enough for both pieces of uh, the shoulder strap. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off uh, another inch and a quarter strap from here. Now I don't typically use the clamp for this because you can just hold it this way. So I have another strap right here, inch and a quarter strap. Let me explain something to you guys real quick. All right, so in a second here, I just cut off two straps, um, inch and a quarter off the spine, arguably the strongest part of the, the hide. They're both close to 40, 42 inches. You're not going to use all that for your, your um, shoulder strap. However, you'll notice when it comes time to cutting out all the other pieces, the smaller intricate pieces, the D-ring connectors, everything else, um, I use a clicker. But it's easier to do it by hand uh, if you already have the, the width of that little piece. So all you would have to do is let's say a lot of those other pieces are inch and a quarter inch wide, uh, inch and a quarter wide. This is why I made it this way, is so that you could just cut off a couple of straps, and any leftover you might have a little bit left over like this. Let's say you can use that leftover piece to make the other pieces, the D ring connector, um, a handle connectors. You just got to cut off using a round punch. And I'll show you that when the time comes, but don't throw out any of the little extras that we have there because a lot of this you can use for other items, all right? So now, this is what I use. A big old scale like this, right? A scale. Um, a frame, framer square, sorry, a framer square. And we're going to go ahead and mark out the, the crude dimensions for the A, part A, B, and C. I just need, in, I need at least 48. So I'm, I'm not cutting off the 48. I need, now I need the height of those three pieces. And I'm gonna mark it with a little uh, awl like that. I'm just gonna mark it. And in a couple different spots. All right. And I know this, these measurements by memory. Uh, 
I always like to do a couple so that I have a good reference. So that is marked. Right there, right there, and right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this butt because um, I don't need that butt. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the butt because I have enough here. I have enough here for 48. So my 48 mark is here all the way to the end so I can cut off this butt right here. And we're gonna do that the same way If you find an easier way of, see? Oh, I thought it moved on me and it didn't. And this is not super important, don't have to be super straight edge, but it helps if you have straight edges everywhere because you can work off those straight edges. So here's the butt. We'll put this down here for now. Oh man, okay. So I have those marks. And what we're gonna do, I have those three marks and we're cutting out basically the height of the bag this way. So what I'm gonna do is take a scale, bring it off the edge and basically cut this the same way I did with, with, um, the, the first cut that I did, but I want to make sure. I always triple check. Always triple check because this is crucial. Right. That is correct. And I do this the same way. Clamp, not super tight right there. Make sure all three dots are overlapping. Sometimes I can't find a dot. Yeah, I found it right there though. Okay, I think we're finally good. And we're gonna cut along this straight edge here. It's probably not gonna go through the first time, but I wanna get a good hard pass first. All right, let's see how well this did. Not bad. So not bad, just a couple spots. They need to be uh, finished off. Just take your time with this because this is a uh, Crucial. All right. So there it is. I'm gonna double check to make sure this is all. Yeah, see? So this is all the height of the bag. All right, this is the height of the bag. Now we're gonna cut off the width. All right, this is why I wanted to make sure that we had enough for that width. And we're talking barely right there, which is fine. Yep, that works. So now these two are parallel. Let's get a straight edge off of this parallel down here. So these are parallel to each other. This is square. This piece is not square. We're gonna work that way. Same thing. 
Same thing here. I'm gonna bring it, I don't know if you can see how it's not square. That's what we're doing right now though. I'm gonna bring this up here. So make sure that this square, you can actually use the long edge here. It'll make it a little tighter. Um, we're not measuring anything. We just wanna make sure this is a square, all right? So you can put this piece back here so it doesn't move on you. Make sure it's plumb that way. And we're gonna cut right here. At the bottom it gets, that's where it has a, a tendency to push out on you, so just be very careful. If you gotta make a couple passes, that's fine. And that's what we took off, that little bit. This is garbaggio. Now if you notice, this is square and this is square. Now we can cut off 16 inch chunks. It'll be square. We're still cutting out ABC and they're all the same, okay? We're going to mark them and cut them out. I'm gonna do this one time. And then you guys get the gist of that, right? So I just marked my two dots, All right? Can you see the two dots? Right there, I'm gonna bring it up and cut alongside that Dunsky's. Make sure the two dots line up top and bottom. I think they need to come, come this way a little bit more. That's the beauty of having this weight, having this weight here. Down here is gonna, is gonna work where it wants to kick out. All right, so there's, there's one panel. And if you do a rough thing, yep, yep. And we gotta do that two more times. All right, so I don't think you need to see me do that. Uh, I'll follow up here in a second. So here's A, B, C or CBA, it doesn't matter, they're all the same. This is the beauty of my, my template is that they're all the same and you can kind of pick and choose. Oh, I want this to be the flap, I want this to be the main body. I don't like this here, so I'm gonna make this the flap so I can kind of get rid of that. Um, so A, B, and C is done. Um, let's move on to all these small intricate pieces. So A, B, and C is cut out. Why, right, come on. Uh, M and N, I think it's M and N. The shoulder strap. The rough pieces are cut out for the shoulder strap. The bulk of the briefcase is cut out A, B, and C, and you can kind of choose which ones you want. We'll get there in another day. But now we have a lot of, I, kinda, I just kind of wanted to show you what's left of the side. You have this neck, you can probably do a lot with another A or B. You have this butt, you can do a lot with A or B or C. You have this whole piece, you can do a lot with. So like I said, I think you can get about two um, on the, the main body of the stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and use the butt as well as this piece. We won't, we won't use the neck. But we're gonna use the butt and this piece to actually get out uh, the other pieces, to cut out the other pieces. So for the rest of this stuff, I'm gonna show you a way that I do it um, if you don't have a clicker, all right? You're probably gonna be tempted for, let, let's just say piece H. Let's just use that as an example. You notice that the width is the width is one inch for H, right? I'm gonna show you a trick on how I do it. So for whatever of those smaller pieces, look at the width first. It's easier, it's easier to use a strap cutter. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I set it to one inches, right? Can you see that? I'm gonna take the one inch, 
on a straight edge. We already have a couple straight edges. I'm just using this for example. You would use a long run, something like this. So cut a long strap, all right? Let's go ahead and just do it to show you. Let's say you have a long piece like this. What I do next, I'm gonna go ahead and do H for you to, to show you. So we're looking at H. Right now we're looking at uh, literally just uh, one inch wide piece so far, right? That's what we got so far. So we need a one inch wide piece. You get a pair of wing dividers like this. So you set this to half the width of this. So this is one inch. We're gonna set this up to half inch. Half inch. So this is what I do. On H, I'm moving, I'm, 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 I'm reading this from left to right. We already have the width as one inch. I'm gonna mark just the outside where I'm gonna where I'm gonna use to make that radius. You see that radius there? So what I'm gonna use for that radius is an actual, is an actual one inch piece. I'm just marking right here where that's gonna start, okay? The next hole is that X. That's gonna be right in the middle of the strap. You notice it says half inch up. That's just the middle of the strap. I'm gonna mark that hole. Then from that hole to the next hole, it shows two and a quarter. You see that at the top? Two and a quarter. So from half to, you gotta add two and a quarter. So you're looking at, oh man, you're gonna make me do math right now. So two, half plus two and a quarter. That's 2.75. So, I put it right here. Or you can also just move this back to, to here, right? It doesn't matter if you put this at zero and add two and a quarter, that, that's that. And then from the next hole is half inch. And that is piece, piece H, that's how I do it. I don't know if that makes sense. I just run it from left to right. Just follow the template. And the way I cut this off is with the, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna put this on the outside. I'm just, I'm marking the outside of my hole. I don't know if you can see that. It's not showing you the light. I'm marking the outside. That X is going to be a 5.30 seconds hole. That's what the X is, 5.30 seconds hole. We'll get, we'll get to punching everything out here in a little bit, but uh, that's how you get all those pieces out, okay? All those other little pieces. That's how you do it. It's easier doing it like that than try to freehand cut a one and a half inch wide or an inch and a quarter inch wide piece. That's how I do that, okay? Just so you know. <sighs> All right, so before you cut anything out, anything that's marked with an X, that's a five thirty seconds hole, okay? I use a five thirty seconds punch. Can you see that? Five thirty seconds. You can use something a little bigger or smaller. It's up to you, but I found that those are perfect. So anything that's marked with an X, go ahead and uh, uh, use that hole. As far as the other stuff, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my clicker because I have dies made. I'm going to cut out all these other pieces. Okay, so. Let me punch that out and then we'll go over, we'll go over it again.
What I'm looking for is a really stiffer, more firm part of the leather, which is right here for this pieces. This is uh, for the D-ring connectors. Alrighty, let's see what we got. This is it. All right, so here's everything cut out. The holes aren't marked. Um, we'll do that uh, another video, but let me show you all the patterns that's nine ounce, all right? We still have to work on cutting up the five ounce pieces. But for right now, pattern A, B, and C, that's this, nine ounce, or eight to 10 ounce, but. And you can still, like I said, these are all the same dimensions. Um, when it's time to actually punch the holes and uh, put the radiuses on everything, we'll decide then which, what's gonna be what, you know? So pattern A and B, right there. Um, we're looking at, hold on. Uh, the next nine ounce piece is gonna be H. That's these two pieces right here. H. I. H is the handle connectors. This is gonna be I, all nine ounce. Everything here is nine ounce, that's I, four of those. Next one's gonna be J. This is the female buckle. This is what it, what it, what it should look like, J. J. K, the male buckle, okay. Now obviously, every, every, every hole is indicated by an X is 530 seconds, otherwise, it's gonna be whatever hole that I indicate there. Like for example, K shows a 3 8 hole, okay? That middle one's 3 8 and on J, that one's gonna be a quarter inch hole. So X's are 530 seconds unless otherwise specified, just so you know. L is the support straps. That's what it looks like right there, two of those. O are the trigger snap connectors. Trigger snap connectors, two of those, that's for the strap. Obviously you have your strap pieces we talked about earlier, M and N right here. Then you have P, the shoulder strap keepers. That's what that looks like there. And uh, to make this right here, guys, right here, that's called the Pippin Punch. That's actually called a Pippin Punch. Let me grab the tool. You need two of those. Well, let me grab the tool to show you what that looks like. C.S. Osborne. Oh, this is so hard to do upside down. C.S. Osborne Pippin Punch. I think Buckle Guy sells these. That's what it looks like. All right, Pippin Punch. That's how you make those holes. Uh, and then lastly, for the nine ounce pieces, piece R, which is a base inset, all right? Now this is just a square, and what I did was use to make that radius. This is the same radius I'm gonna use for the piece A and B on the bottom. You'll see that I use the same tool uh, for that radius. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want, um, but remember the tighter, if you make this shorter, the radius, it's gonna be a lot harder to stitch that gusset. So this radius will yield one and three eighths inch radius, which is, uh, that is the diameter of uh, 2.75. So a two and a three quarter inch circle will yield a radius of inch and three eighths, all right? So two and six eighths, which is 2.75. So two and three quarter inch circle diameter will yield this radius. If you don't have a tool like this, we'll get into it at a later date, but you should look into a tool like this. And that you can use that 
to get that radius, see, which is 2.75, all right? So I'll put a link in the description where you can get something like this. We'll go over tools here in a little bit, but uh, yeah, you definitely need this uh, to do everything else. That's all the pieces for a nine ounce. Now we're gonna get into all the five ounce pieces. The rest of the stuff, D, E, F, G, and Q. So D, which is a gusset, E, the newspaper pocket, F, laptop sleeve, G, uh, the, the handle itself, Q, that is oh, the D-ring connectors. That's all five ounce. So let's go ahead and grab our five ounce side and cut that up. All right, so I got my five ounce. It's a whole side untouched. It's gonna be no different than uh, the, the way I cut up the other, uh, the other uh, pieces. Uh, I'm gonna look for the back, which is right here towards me. I already used this up a little bit actually, I think. Yeah, I used a little bit of it. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna cut out is the gusset. Um, so I'm gonna find a really, really good piece to do that. And uh, yeah, you can tell down here is the belly is a little more spongy, more flim flimsy. Over here is stout, so we're gonna use that. So let's go ahead and start that. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward. Um, I'm gonna cut this out and then uh, we'll talk about the pieces once we're done. All right. All right, I'm gonna cut this off. We'll reconvene when I have everything cut out and we'll talk about the pieces themselves. All right, I cut everything out. We'll go over that in a second, but I kinda want to show you what's left over. Um, and, I, and I already tapped into um, this, uh, this side a little bit. So this is left over. So is this, these little pieces, and this here. So you can see that you can still get another briefcase out of it, at least for the five ounce stuff. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. So you got a lot left over. Now we're gonna go over the actual pieces here. All right, let's look at the pieces. We're gonna look at the newspaper pocket, which is E, like an echo, newspaper pocket. F like in Frank, that is the laptop sleeve, very similar. One's a little shorter, not as wide, okay. And G, like in Galgamish, that is the handle right there. The handle. Q, like in quality, uh, the D-ring connectors. It's these two little guys. Don't forget, this is all five ounce. Uh, S, like in Sam, the spine tab. I call this the spine tab. Okay, that's the spine tab, that's what it looks like. And then of course D, like in Delta, the gusset. Now I just cut the, the width out the way I wanted to. It's still long, we'll have to work on this. This is one of the last steps, but you need at least 40 inches of this, as wide as the, the, uh, the print says. So all the pieces are done. I wanna talk about one little thing real quick, and that is cutting out these items here. If you notice on your print it says to come off the edge X amount and come off the edge X amount. And then from there you mark it and you take where your marks are at here. You put this on there, take your all, scratch a line, remove it, and then you cut it out with your blade, okay? I'll put a link in the description where you can find this. Um, that's how you get that. These scallops are optional. You don't need these scallops if you don't want to. You do not need these scallops. But that's how I do it. It's with this tool. So you notice that the radius there says three and a half on these scallops. Anytime you see a radius, you double that and that, makes, that tells you the diameter of the circle that I used. So if the radius is three and a half, that means that the diameter of the circle that I use to make that radius is twice that much, which is the diameter, which is seven inches. 
So that's how I got that radius there. But I noticed I didn't go halfway the circle. That's why I indicated where you start that and you put those two, line them up. However you want to do that scallop, that's how I do it. Just wanted to clarify that. All right, let me give you a little outro. All right, before we close this uh, video, I got to get the hardware. I forgot to tell you, show you the hardware I get. So stand by. Let me grab all that. So in the description below, I'm going to give you a list where you can find it. And I'm not a uh, sponsor or anything. It's just this is where I get it. You need four inch and a quarter D-ring. Four inch and a quarter D-ring. Four of these, okay? Four. One, two, three, four. All right. You need one three-quarter inch D-ring. One three-quarter inch D-ring. You need two one-inch trigger snaps. This is going to be for the radial strap, or for, not the radial strap, for the actual shoulder strap. Two of those, one inch. One inch and a quarter buckle. One inch and a quarter buckle for the strap. You need this collar set. This is called a collar set. I'll put a link in the description where you can get this. This is all from Weaver Leather. I'll put a link in there. A collar set. That's the female and the male for obvious reasons. And then you need two Sam Brown studs, AKA button head screws. All right. This is how I make my strap keeps. That's how I make the strap keeps. All right. That's it for the hardware. Look in the description. There'll be a link to where you can get all this stuff. Let me give you an outro and then I'm done. All right, so I didn't expect that to be that long, so I apologize in advance, but I kind of wanted to go over specifically what I use and go over every single pattern, what it looks like. So forgive me in advance if this is a little long-winded, but like I said, look in the description for the time stamps. That's really gonna help you out. So with this video, hopefully you understood the patterns, uh, what what is what on the pattern on the bag. Um, I even taught you how to cut it the way I do it, but if you find the easier way, then by all means, uh, do it that way, no big deal. Um, so thank you very much. Don't forget to um, download the patterns. It's in the link, it's in the description. Uh, I look forward to probably in a week or two coming out with the next step, which I think is gonna be punching out all the holes and beveling and burnishing what we need to bevel and burnish for now. I think moving forward, we're looking at another six to eight hours worth of work. And um, I didn't include it in the cutting out the five ounce part, but I did cut out some extra five ounce stuff. This is a bonus. This is gonna be the hanging flap. It's not in your, it's not in your prints, but it's really simple and I'll show you how to do this. The reason why I left it out of the, the print was because this is really, really uh, customizable. You can make it bigger, shorter. Um, so I'll show you the concepts and it's pretty self-explanatory once we put it together. So I added that, but that's not in your print. Um, and that's it. I look forward to making the next video. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much. God bless you. Talk to you later. Leave me a comment below. Let me know how you like this video. All right, God bless you guys. Thanks.